from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's ongoing virtual coverage of IBM Think 2021. This is our second virtual think and we're going to talk about what's on the minds of CTOs with a particular point of view from the EMEA region. I'm pleased to welcome Rashik Parmer who is an IBM fellow and vice president of technology for EMEA, that region. Hello Rashik, good to see you. Hey Dave, great to see you. So let me start by, by asking Talk a little bit about the role of the CTO and, and why is it necessarily important to focus on the CTO role versus say some of the other technology practitioner roles? Yeah, you know, you know, Dave, I, as you look at all the range of roles that they've got in, in the IT department, the CTO is uniquely placed in looking forward at how technology and how digitization is going to make a difference in the business, but also at the same time is there as the, the kind of thought leader for how they're going to really um, reimagine the use of technology, reimagine automation, reimagining how digitization helps them go to market in different ways. So the CTO is a unique, pos a unique position from idea to impact. Uh, and in the past, we we've kind of lost the CTO a little bit, but they're now reemerging as being the thought leader that's owning and driving digitization going forward in our, in our big clients. Yeah, I, I would agree. It really has a deep understanding of that vision and can apply that vision to, to business success. So you obviously have a technical observation space uh, and, and you also have some data. So maybe you could share with our audience how you inform yourself and your colleagues and IBM on, on what CTOs are thinking about and what they're worried about. Yeah, and, and so, so what we've done over the last uh, four years now is gone out and interviewed CTOs um, and we do a very, unstructured interviews it's not it's not a survey in the form of um, you know filling these uh, these 10 questions and tell us yes or no it really is a structured interview we, we ask things like what's top of mind for you what are the decisions you're making um what's uh, holding you back what decisions do you think you shouldn't have made or you wouldn't have liked to make and, and it's that range of um of real input from the, the interview so last year we interviewed 100 ctos um this year, we're actually doing a lot more. We're working with the IBM Institute of Business Value, and we're going to interview a lot more CTOs. But, but the material we're going to talk about today is, is really from those 100 CTO interviews. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, having done a lot of these myself, when you do those, we call them you know, in-depth interviews or IDIs, you kind of have a structure and you just sort of follow that, but you learn so much. And that it maybe does inform those more structured interviews uh, that, that, you, that you do down the road, you learn so much. But, but maybe you could summarize some of the concerns in the region, what's on the minds of, of CTOs? Yeah, and, and you know, the, 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 the real decisions are based around seven points, right? So the first one is, we all know we're on a journey to the cloud, um, but it's a hybrid multi-cloud. How do I think about the range of capabilities I need to be able to um, unlock the latent potential of existing investments and the cloud-based capabilities we've got? So, so the, the hybrid cloud platform is, is, is one of the, the first and foundational pieces. The second challenge is the CTOs want to modernize their applications and that modernization is a journey of, of moving towards microservices. That, that microservices journey has two parts. One is the business facing view and that's what containers is all about, choosing the right container platform. At the same time, they also want to use containers as a way of automation and management and reducing the effort in the infrastructure. So, so that's kind of two parts of the, that whole container journey. So microservices really become the, 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 the business developer view and containers become the operational view. At the same time, they want to infuse new data. So they want to climb the AI ladder. They want to get the new, new insights from that data that plugs into those new workflows. To get to those workflows, there's a decision around how do I isolate myself from some of the services I'm using there? And, and we, we've created a, a, a layer in the decisions around what we call cloud services integration. So cloud service in integration is, is kind of the, the, the modern day ESB as we might think about it, um, but it's a way in which you choose which technology, which APIs I'm going to use from where. And then ultimately the CTOs are trying to build what are the new, um, uh, the new workflows, intelligent workflows. And they're really worried about how do I get the right level of automation that managing that issue between what becomes creepy and valuable, right? You know, there's some workflows that happen. You think, why the hell did that happen? I don't, that doesn't make sense. 
and, and, it, and, and it really sort of nerves the consumer, the user, whereas some which are, wow, that's really cool, I really enjoyed that. To try to get the intelligent workflows right is a big concern. And then on, on the two big uh, parallels of that is how do we uh, manage the systems, the operational automation, right from having the right data, the observability of all the, the infrastructure, recognizing they've got a spectrum of things from 30, 40, 50 year old systems to modern day cloud native systems, how do I manage, how do I operationally automate that, keep that efficient and effective? And then of course, protecting from the, the perpetrators, right? There's, there's a lot of people out there wanting to dig into the systems and 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 draw all kinds of um, you know uh, data from their system. So security, privacy, and making sure they're aligned with the ethics and privacy of the, the business. So those are those are the kind of range of issues. So how to right from the, the journey to cloud through to operational automation through through you know, intelligent workflows right into managing and protecting the, the, the services. It's interesting, thank you for that. I mean, I remember, and you will as well, the sort of the post Y2K you know, thrust and part, sort of part of the modernization back then was you know, during that, they had budget to do that. But a lot of times organizations would make the mistake that they, would, they were going to migrate off of a system that was working just fine. That was their sort of mental model of, of, of modernization. And it turned out to be disastrous in many cases. And so what, when I talk to CIOs, they talk about maybe, you know, I look at it as this, this abstraction layer. We want to protect what we have that works. Yes, some stuff's going to go into the public cloud, but this hybrid connection that you talk about. And then we want control. And the way we're going to get control is we're going to use microservices to modernize and use okay. modern APIs. And so very, very sort of different thinking. And of course they want to avoid migration at all costs because it's so expensive and risky. I wonder if you could talk about, are there any patterns uh, in terms of where people get started and the kinds of outcomes that they're working towards that they can measure. Yeah, we, we kind of lump the the learning from the the work into three broad patterns, right? Um, one pattern is is primarily around survival. They recognize that this journey um, is is very complex. the The pandemic has created tremendous challenges. Um, the market dynamics means that they've got to try and really be um, thoughtful in, in taking costs out and making sure they survive some of these issues. And, and so the, the pattern is really around cost reduction. It may start with hybrid cloud, it may start with the intelligent workflows, but it's really about taking cost out of the, the systems. The, the second pattern is, is what we refer to as a simplification pattern. And this is about saying that we've got, we've got so much complexity because of technical debt because of you know systems that we've half migrated and half done things with um, so how do i how do i simplify my it landscape from applications through infrastructure through data and, and make it more consistent and manageable and, and and effective and then the third one is that there are ctos saying look we've got to really pick the the, the time when we super scale something we've got some things which we are unique and effective on and I want to take that and really super scale that very quickly and make that consistent and, and really maximize the value of it. So the, so the patterns really fall into those three categories of driving, driving cost reduction and survival, simplification and modernization, transformation, and then those that have got something which is unique and special and really super scaling that. Yeah, right, right. Doubling down on those things that give you unique competitive advantage. Now, in this, in in the studies that you've done over the years, you use this term ADP, architectural decision points, and some of them are quite compelling. Maybe you could talk about some of those. Were there some anxieties from the CTOs that that you uncovered? Yeah, you know, the, the ADPs that we've talked about the seven ADPs, and, and it starts from the hybrid multi crowd through to to intelligent workflows and so on. Um, and and the, the ADPs themselves are really distilling the client's words and the client's um, way of thinking about how they're going to drive those, those technologies um, and, and also how they're going to use those technologies to make a difference. But as we went through those interviews, um, what became apparent is CTOs do have some anxieties, as you refer to, um, and, and those anxieties, they couldn't necessarily put words on them. And there were anxieties like, are we thinking enough about the carbon footprint? Are we, are we being you know, thoughtfully in how we make sure we're reducing carbon footprint or reducing the environmental impact of the infrastructure. You've got, we've got sprawling infrastructure um, ripping out rare metals from the, the earth. Are we being thoughtful in how we reduce the, um, the amount of rare metals we have? Water consumption, right, uh, right through to 
is the code that we're producing efficient, secure, and 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 fit for for the future? Um, are we being ethical in capturing the data for its right use? Um, is the AI systems that we're building are they explainable? Are they ethical? Are they free from bias? Or are we kind of amplifying things that we shouldn't be amplifying? So there was a whole bunch of those what we call anxieties. And, and what we did along with the architectural decision report um, point, architectural decision point report was, was identify what we call a set of responsibilities. And, and we've built a framework about, around responsible computing, which is, a, which is a basis for how you think through what your responsibilities are as a as a CTO or as an IT leader, um, and we're right in the process of building out that that kind of um, responsible computing framework. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people may may think about they, they think about the responsible computing and 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 the sustainability, and they might think that's a a 180 from Milton Friedman economics, which said the job of business is to make profits. But in fact, responsible computing, there's a strong business case. Uh, around it. it. It actually can help you reduce costs. It, it can help you attract better employees because young people are passionate about this. I wonder if you could talk about how, how people can get involved with responsible computing and, and lean in. Yeah, so what we're about to publish is, is actually a manifesto for responsible computing. So I think everybody, once we get that published, I'm, I'm hoping to do that in the next uh, two to three months. We're working with a few clients. Um, so there's actually three clients that have chosen, three client CTOs from the ones that we interviewed, we're very keen to collaborate with us in, in laying out that um, uh, that manifesto. And the opportunity really is from anybody listening, if, if you if you find this of, of great value, please do come and reach out to me. I'm more than happy to collaborate. We're looking for more insights on this. Um, we've also had some um, competitions. So in, in, in EMEA, we've had a competition with, uh, with business partners looking for ideas of how we can um, really showcase examples or exemplars of being a responsible computing provider, whether it's at the level of responsible data center, whether it's about responsible code, data use, responsible systems, right through to responsible impact. And you know, obviously a lot of our work around things like um, you know, tech for good is, is tied directly to responsible impact. Uh, and of course, if you want to see what we IBM have been doing, our responsible uh, responsibility report, which we've been voluntarily publishing for the last 30 years, provides a tremendous set of insights on how we've done that over the years. And, and that's, a, that's a great way for you to see how we've been doing things and see if they're, they're applicable in your business. Yeah, so there's, so there's the, the, the ADP report is available. You can check it out on, on LinkedIn. Um, go, to, go to Rashik's LinkedIn profile, you'll find it. There's a blog post that talks about the next wave of, of digitization, um, you know, the learnings that you just talked about. So there's a lot of resources for, for people to get involved. I'll give you the last word, Rashik. Yeah, and look, th this is this is a what I call job begun. It's not job done. The, the whole ADP responsible computing is is a digitization journey, where we want to balance delivering business value and making a difference to the organization, but at the same time being responsible in making sure that we're we're, we're thoughtful of what's needed for the future and we create uh, impact that really matters and and we can feel proud that we've put a foundation for digitization. Which will, which will serve the businesses for many years to come. Love it, impact investing in your business and in the future. Rashik, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Dave, pleasure, thank you. Okay, keep it right there for more coverage from IBM Think 2021. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE.